down here at LSP level special products. So LSP hooked us up with the 600 amps of lithium that we put in the caravan for the power install. But these guys make some of the most badass suspension components for caravans, especially these imported uh, Chinese ones. So the boys are gonna get underneath my van, they're gonna rip everything out and show us some of the components that we should be looking at if we own one of these imported caravans, whether it is the bearings, whether it is the bushes, all the shocks, all the springs for that matter. The boys have told me that they've even seen springs shatter. I'm gonna rip all this stuff out and we're gonna fit it up with some really good high quality gear. So that way we know we're not gonna have any dramas when we're going across the desert this year. The van is a really good base, but they just lack some of the more refined things. Like they mentioned today, it's like most people with their four wheel drives will replace their suspension from the stock stuff that they have in there. But many people don't do that with a caravan. Most of the Australian caravans come with good suspension, but when you buy these Chinese ones or the Chinese camper trailers, the, the components are very, very, very poor. Um, especially the shock quality, the, the bush quality, the bearings and things like that. It's all made to a price point, so they're going to pull all that stuff out. We're going to fit it some, with some really good uh, LSP made stuff, and hopefully that will limit me from having any sort of issues across the desert this year. And we're going to put this stuff, all these components, through a really good thorough over 6,000 kilometer test. Boys are going to crack on now, we're going to back the van up into the workshop, they're going to start ripping everything out. Hey guys, Bruce from LSP. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about what we're doing to Ty's van, why we're doing it, and the advantages of the stuff that we're doing. So, um, we'll start with the boring but very important stuff. The uh, swing arm bushes, they're made out of polyurethane, um, which is great for race cars. But in caravans, uh, they tend to sort of not let last the test of time too well. They break down, they turn a bit chalky, then throw your wheel alignment out and chew your tyres. So we've designed a 90 duro rubber bush as a replacement part. We've also integrated a grease groove in the bore there, as you can see. So lubricating them is quite easy through the grease nipple on the front of the swing arm. Uh, the next thing we're changing out is the cam bolts. So the OEM cam bolts, um, they are a washer welded to the bolt. So that grade 8.8 .8 bolt is no longer an 8.8 .8 bolt because it's been heat affected. So we want that bolt to be nice and strong. So we've machined our cam bolts. So there's no welding required, so these bolts aren't heat affected uh, and they'll last the test of time. I'll show you these cam bolts installed. Oh, let's have a look under here. So there's the cam bolt all installed, witness marked because the boys have done the, the wheel alignment on it. The swing arm bushes are in there. And then as you can see at the back there, there's some of the coils that we've started installing. Four of our um, purpose-built uh, and designed um, coil springs for the Black Series HQ range. We design them and make them right here in Newcastle. And then we're going to pair those up with eight of our premium remote red shock absorbers. So they're eight way adjustable. So you can make it nice and soft when you're off road on corrugations and you know, rutted out roads. And then you can make them nice and firm when you're back on the highway. So now that the new bushes and cam bolts are in, we've fitted the new levels coils. We're just checking the bearings now. So the stub axle is nice. There's no sign of any damage on that. Uh, the bearings, however, are Chinese bearings, no name bearings. Uh, and the grease is really burnt in them. So we're gonna replace the bearings with some Timken bearings and some really good grease. Pack them in there nice, set them all up and put them back on. Just pulled in to Alice Springs. You can tell that the uh, Ford Ranger Raptor is going to be running this weekend. There is Raptors. I've seen about 15 Raptors already since we uh, we just pulled into Alice Springs. There's uh, red Raptors everywhere. But truck and caravan have done very, very well. Alice Springs. I'm going to go find a spot on the track now. <laughs> Right, so we're about to get on that road over there going to Fink so I'm gonna make some more adjustments to so the caravan I, I notched them right up to seven 
on the highway. I'm feeling like about about five or six is perfect for the highway. But I'm gonna um gonna swap them over now. I'm gonna go back down to about three or four on the clickers and make them a bit softer just so they're gonna handle these bumps a bit better on this uh, now that we're going on some dirt roads again today. So we'll knock these things down and go from there. I did the shocks, we come around the corner and it was just bad. So, gonna go down to 30 psi on the truck. I'll do the same on the van. Again, I've got these little camp boss deflators. These things are sick. So, you can see the corrugations just here. So, they're pretty, pretty bad. I've seen a lot worse, but they're pretty bad. So we'll drop the Toyos down on the caravan. Down to 30 as well. Gonna stop everything rattling it, rattling the pieces too. I know, letting them bad boys down. You can see the corrugations just here because they've had heaps of rain out here too, so that kind of grade it, and then the corrugations start, and then they like get compacted by all the cars coming through that have their tyres too hard. Not, not very much fun, but it's part of driving out here. So yeah, do your tyres first. If you do have adjustable shocks, then adjust your shocks. I just did it out there back on the road because it was easier to me get underneath there rather than laying in the dirt. What are you going down to? About 35 on these. Yeah, I'm gonna get down to 30 on me all around. Yeah, 30 on the, 30 on the coast. Yeah. Yeah. All right. See how we go. We're back after 7,200 kilometres uh, through the Northern Territory, South Australia, through outback New South Wales. So massive trip, we had an absolute blast. Going to do a bit of a breakdown now on the suspension components and what we actually fitted down there at LSP uh, with Bruce and the guys down there. So he, he contacted me on Instagram and, and hit me up and said, hey, those Chinese caravans, this is just after I bought it, they're not real crash hot suspension wise, and especially some of the bushes and stuff like that can pretty much just turn to chalk and, and fail. And because this van was a few years old, uh, he was worried because he knew where I was going that I might have a major drama with the caravan if I take it out there with those components under it. So he said, let's bring it down, let's fit it all out with our new bushes, our new bolts and everything, gonna put new springs on it and new shocks. And he really wanted me to test their new shock absorbers out with the eight way adjuster clickers. So really wanted to put them through their paces and what a perfect like time to do it. Trip was supposed to be 8,000 Ks, but we had to cut it short because of the rain that was coming down uh, through the center, through Alice Springs and stuff. So we had to get out of Udna Dada and get back across the Cooper Pedy. But yeah, just shy of 7,200 kilometers in total uh, that we ended up doing on that trip. So was there a big difference between me taking the van to Fraser or the Northern Territory, me noticing the suspension, 110% this van and even a few that were in our convoy had mentioned that the van was just like glue to the road compared to when we went to fraser the van was very bouncy the shocks didn't work at all they were woeful the uh the the existing shocks that were in it uh, you'll see here i'll put a video up of when we hit this massive big g out pothole um going through udna data and the van just instantly hits and then it's just straight composed there's no bouncing side to side 
That's also why I like dual axle trailers. There's a lot more control there than on, on single axle trailers. So these were brand new springs. As you can see, <laughs> they're absolutely peppered now. Some of the damage here on the side, how hard those stones were hitting into the chassis rails. It's just absolutely crazy. That was all nice red paint before we left. So I've got the clickers on the back side. I've got them just mounted down here. Uh, a suggestion that I made to, to LSP was to have for the dual axles, have a longer set of lines that can run further up the chassis because I couldn't really find anywhere to mount them. So the guys are going to look at um, having another set of lines that you can option uh, so that way you can put your remote resis further up along the chassis rail. Because of the front axle, I had to mount them up underneath the van. So then, and then to adjust them, I had to climb under the van and just run the clickers. But I suppose once you get it to a point, I think around about after what I just did, setting four for pretty much everything is absolutely perfect. Even setting five, yeah. So four or five, I think you'd be you'd be good. About midway is kind of a good all round for all the conditions that you could potentially be throwing this van at. Because uh, I did, I did everything. We did mud, uh, we did rocks, gravel, corrugations, highway, and yeah. So I'd say probably about setting four or five is where you'd want to be at anyway. And then you could just leave them and not worry about using them anymore. Uh, but yeah, if they had the the ability of having a set of clickers, having longer hoses to run up the chassis, I think that'd be a um, a good option. And I probably found that a lot of the stuff in the caravan as well wasn't <laughs> thrown all over the place like it was uh even though those conditions were harsher than fraser the the stuff in the caravan wasn't thrown everywhere like it was before it's just the van was so much more composed and and just handled so much better have we had any failures on the van not really the only issue that we had on that big trip was the uh the hot water system just kept playing silly buggers but every time i blew it out with the with the air blower it would come good again um, oh and the fridge the fridge had a meltdown one day um, for some reason it wouldn't work i think it might have been the dust as well so yeah just some things i'm going to look at i'm going to replace the fridge and i might even replace the the hot water system but if you're going to do a trip like that you really need to find a way of controlling the rocks coming off your vehicle i didn't think it'd be as bad as what it was but Oh boy, did, was I wrong with how many rocks were smashing into the van. <laughs> the whole front of it is chipped up. But you can see now all the uh, the paint that's been taken off from it going off-road. So that, that silver rail through there, the galvanised rail used to be black. <laughs> now it's, uh, yeah, now we've gone back to, uh, we've sandblasted it, that's for sure. You can see the damage here on this pipe. I'm gonna get a bit of, bit of uh, conveyor belt and put in front of this so it doesn't damage it anymore. You can see all the peppered from all the rocks smacking into it. Come inside, because it's blowing an absolute gale out there, but yeah, if you're looking for caravan suspension, go and see the guys at LSP. I'm super impressed with how that stuff just went across the desert. No failures, nothing went wrong on the van. Yeah, and I... <laughs> Trev can vouch for me that I deliberately hit every hole I could find to see if I could break something and yeah it uh standed up to it so and with the footage that I've just shown you guys I, I hit some pretty gnarly stuff where the van actually got air multiple times so if you want to see the guys at LSP I'll have everything down in the description if you want to check that out also jump on the website grab yourself a hat grab yourself a sticker something off the website. I've also got big fridge stickers in there for your Bushman upright fridges or your Dometic fridges, even the King's fridge. Um, the rough size will fit most things. So jump over there, support the channel, buy some stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Catch us later.